Hey everyone, we got our last fish of the day today. Our last fish of the day, we're talking about salmon. Salmon? You already learned about salmon. You learned about salmon in the fourth grade. In the fourth grade, you made a poster about the life cycle of salmon. You learned about salmon in the seventh grade. In seventh grade, you got salmon eggs. You raised them in an aquarium in your classroom. And then you took the baby salmon and you released them out into some creek in the Seattle area. Yeah, you learned about salmon because salmon are important to us. Based on where we live here in the Pacific Northwest, they're important because of our culture, because uh, recreationally we like to eat them, and because of the things we love. Orca whales, they're important to the orca whales, and we love the orca whales. So then salmon are important to us. More on that in a little bit later. Uh, you learned about this in grade school. Today what we got to do is got to crank it up to a high school level. High school salmon is what we're doing today. In grade school, you learn about salmon, that they go up a river right where they are born, and there they lay their eggs. Wait a minute. And now we could go high school level. We could put a word with that. We learned the word. Remember it? Yes, salmon are anadromous. Yeah. They go up a river to lay their eggs. That means they're anadromous, just like the sure smelt, the forage fish. Now, salmon, they go up a river, and then they're going to lay their eggs. And they're going to lay their eggs in three to four rocky nests. The female, she's going to roll over on her side. She's going to scrape open a bunch of little tiny rocks, which is important. We'll talk about it later. There, she's going to lay her eggs. You don't want to lay all your eggs in one basket. You want to spread it out. She's going to make one uh, egg nest here. She'll make another one over there. And then she'll make another one over there. <laughs> the males, they go over and they, they fertilize the eggs. And then after the male fertilizes eggs, they're going to cover up the eggs with those ro tiny rocks. There, then they're just going to sit there. And they'll just kind of watch the eggs, kind of protect the eggs a little bit until they die. <sighs> Don't want to get into that. But I want you to write down that they lay their eggs in rocky nests. Again, it's going to be important on uh, something that's going to come up a bit later about saving our salmon. All right, that was grade school and we cranked it a little bit up to high school level. Let's do more. Now, there's salmon that are born in a hatchery, and then there's salmon that are born in the wild. <laughs> I want you to know the difference. Now, the grade school part of you says, well, I already know the answer. Hatchery salmon, they're born in a salmon hatchery. Wild salmon are born out there free and in the wild. They're born in the creek. That's where mom and dad lay the egg. It's in the creek and, and then it hatches in the creek and it grows up in the creek. <laughs> but let's go up to high school level. Just by looking at a salmon, you could tell where was it born? Was it born in a hatchery or was it born free in the wild? This is what it is. Salmon are so much a lot like the surf smell. They have an extra fin. They have the adipose fin, the fin that made it up in the uh, fat, the second fin on its back. But a hatchery salmon, before they release the salmon into the creek, they, they cut off the adipose fin. It was. It was one of the greatest days of my childhood. See, I grew up in Issaquah. And in, in Issaquah, there's the Issaquah Salmon Hatchery. Oh, we love our salmon in Issaquah. In fact, the first weekend of October, the whole town shuts down. We celebrate the return of the salmon. We call it Salmon Days. There's this huge parade, and it goes all the way through that downtown Issaquah, and it ends up at the Issaquah Salmon Hatchery. There, there's a bridge that goes over the Issaquah Creek. Everybody goes there. They cheer on the salmon. You made it. Welcome home. They look terrible. They jump over this fake dam into a concrete swimming pool. And then it will say, yay, you made it in the concrete swimming pool. That's on uh, Saturday and Sunday. And then Monday morning, 
They drain the swimming pool. Then people, they go out there with big garbage cans. They pick up the dead flopping salmon. They squeeze all the eggs or the kookumpucky into a bucket. And then, and then they take all the eggs and kookumpucky and they bring them inside this building. And inside this building, there's all these aquariums. And then they, they, they hatch the eggs inside the aquariums. And then, and then they move them out to these other like concrete swimming pools on the outside. And there for about four months, they feed the baby salmon. They feed them by a Purina salmon chow. I used to go there every day after school. I'd watch them feed the salmon. The baby salmon would be jumping up to the surface. <laughs> it's the baby salmon right there. Then in Issaquah, there's this Issaquah newspaper. It's called the Issaquah Press. And it comes out every Wednesday. Well, one Wednesday when I was 13 years old, I was going through the Issaquah Press. And there's a full page ad by the Issaquah Salmon Hatchery saying, your help is needed this Saturday. Please come help. We're going to release the baby salmon. I go, dad, can I? Can I go see the baby salmon? He said, yes, son. Yeah, you can. There, what I got is a five gallon bucket of baby salmon. I got a pair of scissors. And what they told me to do is grab a baby salmon, clip off the adipose fin, then throw it in this Quaw Creek. Oh, I gently grabbed the baby salmon. I surgically clipped the adipose fin. I didn't throw it. I kissed it. And then I set it into this Quaw Creek. I went through two five gallon buckets that day, <laughs> over nine hours. It was such a great day. I couldn't wait to do it the next year. Next year, I kept waiting for the, uh, the ad. When in the winter, they're going to release the baby salmon. I waited all March. I waited all April. When are they going to do it? I had my pops call this Quan Salmon Hatchery saying, when are you guys going to release the baby salmon? Oh, sorry. We already did. Oh, but my son was going to help out cut off the octopus fin. They're going, oh, we don't need your help anymore. They got the Aqua Tip Fin 2000. And it's this machine that has a spinning blade. And then they just dump the baby salmon in there. And then it goes through the chute. And it just surgically cuts it off and throws them in. They get no kiss. But what I'm telling you is that all hatchery salmon have that fin that's cut off. And then you can tell if the salmon was born in the hatchery or if it was born in the wild. Now, if I wanted to make eight more videos, I'd tell you why it's important. Actually, I'm going to let that go up for a college-level salmon. In college-level salmon, you'll learn about the genetic diversity that's needed. And because there isn't much genetic diversity in the salmon that are always going back to the hatchery, well, then that's led to some problems with our, our hatchery. We make a whole bunch of salmon in our salmon hatcheries, but not many of them come back and, uh, to, to, to survive. And one reason is because there's not so much genetic diversity. That's why scientists want to know if there's a fat salmon out there that was ever born free and in the wild. A lot of people that go salmon fishing, they know what I'm talking about. Because if you go salmon fishing, and if you catch a salmon, and it does have the adipose fin, in a lot of places, you can't keep it. You got to let it go. Because that has the genetic diversity that's needed to kind of keep our salmon populations healthy. All right. High school salmon right there. We learned about the difference between a hatchery salmon and a wild salmon just by looking at it. Next, farmed salmon versus wild salmon. Go ahead, say a grade school answer. What's the difference between a farmed salmon and a wild salmon. <laughs> Good one. A farmed salmon, it's growing on a salmon farm. A wild salmon is growing out there in the ocean, free and in the wild. All right, that was your grade school answer. Now let's crank this up to high school stuff. A salmon farm, you say? What is this salmon farm that you speak of? How do you farm a salmon? I know how you farm cows. I know how you farm chickens. But how do you farm a salmon? Think about it. Okay. Good. You're right. You need a whole bunch of water. What are you going to do? You're going to get like a 
Swimming pool? Now you need something more than a swimming pool. I've seen cow at cattle farms and chicken farms. They have a whole bunch of chickens and cows. Well, how many salmon are you going to have on your farm? Yeah, I think so. You're going to raise 200,000 salmon. So can a swimming pool work? No. Can you make a swimming pool that will work? No. I got it. What if you just get a big old net? Get a big old net and put it out there and uh, how about in the Puget Sound? There you go. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to get a big old net and, 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 and it's going to go like this. And, and in that net, you're going to have 200,000 salmon in there. See, what I want you to know is how do you farm a salmon? I want you to know all the ways that you're going to farm a salmon. Be a great short answer question on our test. Well, you're going to get 200,000 salmon. They're going to be swimming around in a circle. You got to feed them, don't you? What are you going to feed your salmon? Good answer. Salmon eat forage fish. Could you, could you get a whole bunch of forage fish? Oh, you're right. Every salmon is going to eat 10 forage fish a day. 200,000 salmon. That would be 2 million forage fish a day. You can't do that. You got to come up with something better than that. I got it. Corn. Corn. There's a lot of corn out there. Soybeans. Soybeans grow really fast. Can you get like a mixture of like corn and soybeans and grind them up? Maybe can you talk to a commercial fisherman and then like, like they catch a lot of cod in, in the ocean. Can you tech, talk to a commercial fisherman and tell them, can I get the heads and the scale, the body of, of, your, uh, of your cod that you're not using? And then can you just like grind it up with a corn and soybean mixture? And then, then there you got it. You got your salmon chow. And then can you put it like in a big sprinkler and you can like sprinkle it out there? And then that's how you're going to feed your 200,000 salmon. It's a really cheap way to feed your salmon. And you're going to grow your salmon and grow them big and big so you can sell them. That's what they do. I want you to know what they feed the salmon. They feed them a corn and soybean and kind of fish gut mixture. All right. I'm going to pause this because I can't go over my 15-minute video.